In this demonstration, we are going to make a frequency table, relative frequency table, and percentage frequency table, plus a bar chart of some data. So imagine that you've been running some sort of a stool selling different drinks. You write down on a little piece of paper what you sell. So Coke, Diet Coke, Pepsi, da 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 da. So you basically you're only selling five drinks. But uh, da, 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 da. anyway, there's five of them. So you wrote this down. It's not really much use to you in its present format. But if we can get some sort of a relative frequency distribution that might help you say, oh, well, we sold so much of this and that. I'm going to use the pivot table. We go to insert and then pivot table appears on the top left. It asks us where we want to have the data put in. Let's use a new worksheet. You don't have to, but let's use a new worksheet. Doesn't cost anything. So go OK and the pivot table dialog appears. We only have one column, remember? We only have one column, which is brand purchased. Drag that down, left click and drag it down to row labels. And you can see what's happening. Look on the left here. We've already got, it's decided, oh, one, two, three, four, five. There are only five drinks. So the heading or the category of the drinks is there, but we don't know the number, how many there were. We need to put this into values. So again, brand purchased. Now put it into values. We always need something in values. Notice that it says count. That's what we want, count. Sometimes when you start Excel, it'll come up with sum. So if you don't have count, go to click on the right hand side, value field settings. And then it asks us, we want count. We don't want sum or anything else. You could pick the others, but we only want count. Go OK. And there we can see, right, we've got 19 out of the 50, uh, 8 out of this, and da, 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 were the type of drinks there. So tomorrow when we go back, we better bring most of them should be Coke Classic. We can see there's some sort of a proportion. Now, let's make a bar chart out of this. We're only interested in this data here. So highlight the data, go to insert, then column, and then we want a, a bar chart because these are separate categories. They don't overlap at all. They're either Coke Classic or Dr. Pepper or whatever. So you can just click on that and there it comes up immediately. That's pretty good, isn't it? All right, so here is some sort of a bar chart now you can relabel it as you like, I don't know, soft drinks or something, whatever you think. And it tells you, right, on the left-hand side there were, yeah, that's about right, isn't it? Coke Classic, 19 of them, nearly 20. There's the label, da 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 da. So if you want to, you can copy this, you see, you could right-click and then copy it and put it into some other document or presentation or whatever. OK, so that's how to get a bar chart out of this. Now we want to get uh, some sort of a relative frequency. This has just told us, OK, there were 19, but we don't know the proportion. You can tell that there were, all, there were more than twice as many uh, Coke Classic as Diet Coke, etc. But we want some sort of a number. So we're going to do uh, by hand a relative frequency. Now all this is, is we divide whatever number we have in the category by the total n, small n. We have 50, so it's going to be 19 divided by 50. Now this table has been formatted by a pivot table, so when we click on this it's going to get we're going to get a whole lot of junk. Don't worry. Go equals. Remember, all of the Excel commands start with equal. Equal, then click on the 19. See what I mean? All this junk. Never mind. Leave that there. Now put the little slash, the forward slash, which means divide by. You see that? And then 50. Oh, so this means 0.38 were 
Coke Classic. Do it for all of the other ones. I just want you to do that so you don't get alarmed by all this uh, details and stuff that comes up from. OK, equals, and then we do Pepsi. Okay, so now you can see point one, but and it matches the graph, doesn't it? Now let's say we want to get a total of this. We want to get a total. You can go to auto sum here, and it's asking us, do we want to sum from D4, that's cell D4 to D8? Yes, we do. So go there. And it's one, of course. It has to add up to one, because that's the whole lot. All of them are out of one. This part. Now we want to do a percentage. This is easy because all we do is multiply by a hundred to get it as a percentage. So we go equals. Now we click on this cell D4. Now we don't get all that garbage because these are our own numbers not drawn from another source. And then the asterisk which means multiply 100. So we're multiplying 0.38 by 100. So we're going to get 38, isn't it? So 38%. Alright, now let's do an auto sum again. And of course it comes up to 100. It comes up to 100. So these are the three different ones. So we can say that we sold 10% of our drinks were, were Dr. Pepper, uh, we had 16%, etc. So these are two different types of frequency chart. So you should be able to do all these from data. And you can see what the insights are that we can get from it. If we just look at the original data, that was just a column of names, wasn't it? You sold Diet Coke, Dr. Pepper, da, da, da. But using these uh, descriptive statistics techniques, we can find out some interesting things. We can display, oh, Coke Classic was a lot more than this and that, etc. Thank you.